The greatest amount of healing that I was able to accomplish in my life was made once I started living in the light of the Lord. Because he was shining his glorious, magnificent light into all parts of my life and revealing to me the things that were hindering and blocking my ability to really thrive, right? And more specifically, I'm going to talk about relationships and how important it is that we take the time to heal because this is an area where people, I think the majority of us, just don't bother, right? We just figure, well, if this relationship didn't work, uh, it must be them. I'm going to keep moving on from one situation to the next until I find like my perfect person. Not realizing or wanting to even take responsibility that perhaps there's something that you need to do, right? In terms of like, just taking some action on your part in order to be a healthier and whole individual. So as always, there's much to say about relationships and healing, but I'm going to kind of just bring up a few areas and kind of skim over them because this video can be like three hours long or even more if I were to like unravel every part and get into details. So first thing is that we need to heal from soul ties. I have an extensive dating history. I've been in a lot of relationships and situationships. Not proud of it. I'm quite disgusted with the fact that I kind of wasn't more discerning, but you know, live and learn. At least now I can bring information to people based on like what I've been through. And what happens with soul ties is that you may physically no longer be with someone, but deep in your soul, you're still attached to them for whatever reason, right? Whether uh, you spent a lot of time with them and got really emotional, uh, had sex with them, and usually that's like the first trigger for bonding a soul tie, but it can be strictly emotional as well, right? Because someone has embedded themselves so deeply into your soul that now you can't shake them off. Even if you keep jumping from person to person, that person still remains with you, right? And then it kind of taints everything else. So soul ties is something that like we need to address and recover from because they can follow you from one relationship to the next and you will never find true happiness with another person until you break all those chains right, that you've accumulated over time. With some people, it's easier to just kind of move on from them because there wasn't really like a heavy investment. But then there's other people which like years, decades later, like they still have a place in you, right? And you can't no matter how much you try, sometimes you can't like pull yourself away from them because they're, they've done something to you, but we must do work on this part. Right. And sometimes it's continuous and others it's like, just, it's not even an issue because even if you slept with them, like, oh, well, I didn't really invest much or had any kind of strong ties to them. So no big deal. But if you are, still in bondage right to the memory of someone and you know you're just dragging them into your relationships then you really need to take the time to like stop and break those ties from whoever another aspect that we need to heal from is trauma 
And this can be from pretty much anything. Always speaking from my own experiences, but uh, my family really left like deep wounds in my spirit. Not on purpose, but sometimes it just happens, right? And not only did I come from a broken home, but I also witnessed a lot of things that I really wouldn't wish on anybody. And I also developed a lot of trust issues, which then spilled over into other parts of my life. Because if you can't trust your own family, you know, um, try trusting people outside, right? It just gets that much more difficult. So I realized that I had a lot of work to do in this part. And um, it's not just to say that, like, if you come from a divorced family, you have trauma. Even people who had both their parents married can sometimes experience much greater wounds than people whose parents decided to split and just co-parent and had two stable, happy homes rather than have two parents who are clearly not good for each other, were not a model for like a healthy marriage, but yet continue to stay for a multitude of reasons, whether it's for the children, financial, um, you know, they just figure, well, we've invested so much time, we don't want to start over again. And these are not good reasons to remain with a person. And when the children see this type of like um, model for marriage, they think it's okay to do that in their own, you know, union one day. So even if I can't stand this person, like the sight of them, I got to dig my heels in because, well, I saw my parents do that and I had them together. So I don't want to like tear apart this family. Although like this person makes me sick. That is horrible. And I think that a lot of people who came from homes like that really need to heal, right? Because I've seen a lot of that happen. Um, and yeah, and yeah, and that's what I have to say about that. There's also um, addictions that people need to address, right? Whether it's up uh, to a substance, uh, lust, you know, pornography, um, any other type of perversion, um, you know, it, it, you can be addicted to pretty much anything, right? But we need to kind of get to the root of what's going on because addiction, I'm not a psychologist or anything, but I think addiction is just merely a symptom of a, of a root problem. And we always need to get to like the bottom of what's going on, like what is spurring this because it doesn't just happen out of nowhere right like if you're addicted to a drug for instance it could come from many different parts right like for uh for example you could be using it to escape what are you escaping from right your own feelings from the environment could be a combination of things and healing is something that is different for everyone and there is no time limit. So you can't just say, oh, well, I'll just take a year off and, um, you know, not get involved with anyone. And then jump right back in knowing that you're not really recovered. There, there is no set time. And it looks different for everyone. But one of the worst things you can do is like be in a relationship. It fails. Then... You jump into the next one, fails again, and then you're on this merry-go-round of just being involved with all kinds of people without ever really addressing like what's going on, right? Because there is no such thing as a perfect person who's just going to come sweep you off your feet and is going to make everything okay for you. That's not possible. And healing requires a lot of work. Like you really need to be intentional and put in the effort to get to like what it is that's making you unhealthy, right? And really getting to the wounds and trying to heal them up. 
I was gonna say something else, but oh yes, and it's not just enough, right? To let's just say, okay, I'm I'm not dating anymore. I'm tired of this. I can't seem to find anyone like proper. I'm just gonna um, sit here in bitterness and resentment for what's happened, and never take any actions to heal, right? Well, that's wrong as well, because all you're doing is being a victim. And you're not helping yourself. And now like you have really no opportunity to meet someone that is good for you because you simply just gave up altogether. So yeah, like I always stress to people, take the time to heal yourself, right? And like, for instance, I never witnessed in real life any healthy marriages sorry to say that but i didn't um not my parents not friends nobody and that's why i never even wanted to attempt to consider myself as a wife to anyone because i was like this is a really bad deal and um, i all i've seen is like um a lot of misery in these types of situations so why would i sign up for that and then once I started following in the light of the Lord, he began to show me his way and will and purpose for everything he's created. And that includes marriage. And it's good. It's really a beautiful thing. And now I understand what it's intended for, right? why God created it. And I really pray that like, as time goes on, that I'll just become more aware of the things I need to heal from. Cause I've already done like a lot of work because you never want to bring like the worst version of yourself to a relationship. And that's why you need to take the time to recover from all the things you've been through, family, uh, you know, internal, past relationships, society. Oh, that's a big one as well. Uh, when we look outside and, you know, read magazines and they give you all these like dating tips and watch movies and how they, uh, you know, how they fall in love instantaneously and they never show you the ugly parts. And that's why healing can be difficult because you really need to look at all the ugliness, right? And make sense of it and walk away better. You're really doing yourself a great service to yourself and to others if you actually take like a time out, just put everything on pause. Like, and, and yeah, because like sometimes what happens is like people just want to rush because they feel like they have no time. So it's like, or they're lonely, right? And they just jump into anything uh, and they just want to make things happen. Full well knowing that this is like a disaster. You know in your spirit when someone's not for you. I've had the spirit tell me so many times at the start of the relationship, beginning, something's not right, like you need to go, right? And then... I'd have this tug of war with like my, with my internal, right? The internal part of me. And then I would be like battling it out. And then lo and behold, after some time has been invested, years, months, whatever, I come to the conclusion that I should have not been in this from the very start, right? And now I know that like if I meet someone and I don't feel peace and comfort in their presence, I gotta go. I no longer will entertain that kind of thing because I'm healed enough to understand that I need to trust my intuition because before I didn't and it didn't prove to be a good thing. So I'm not in any way saying that like the things I've been through are um, what I'm trying to say is that I'm grateful for my experiences. I'm in no way throwing shade or uh, feel any type of 
way because I'm healed. Like not fully, because I don't think you can ever be fully healed. Things surface. But I've been able to really attack certain areas and just I know in myself I addressed a lot of different things. You know, I got rid of some addictions. Um, you know, I view things differently like marriage. So I already know that there is a result from what I've been doing. And I just keep striving for like more revelation and more insight into how I can be a more healthier person, right? For myself, because I have to live with myself and for others around me because I don't want to intentionally hurt anyone. It's never my my motive for anything, but I did. And I feel really bad for that. But I can admit that I had a lot of problems, a lot of issues, wounds that needed healing. And truth be told, God really, really like transformed me. And I can only just speak from my own experience, right? Once I came to the Lord and really committed myself to him and asked him to show me like his ways, like I said and earlier at the beginning of this video, like I've never done so much healing in my life than when I actually gave myself to him and allowed him to just mold me to remove the corruption from my spirit. And it's an ongoing thing. Like we're all a work in progress, but you got to start somewhere. And just going from like person to person is not a way to like live your life. And it will definitely not help you heal because you're just accumulating more hurt as you go. So until next time, God bless and amen.